Hello, uh, we're talking about privacy preserving prescription drug management using homomorphic encryption techniques. And this is a project uh, between Arya, Ni, Chenkai, and myself. And to give some background context to this kind of niche problem that we're working on, uh, in the U.S. and all over the world, prescription opioid abuse is a major healthcare concern. And according to the CDC, there's about 46 deaths per day uh, due to opioid abuse. So one approach to tackling this kind of problem is implementing a prescription drug monitoring program. Um, and this is a federally funded program that states uh, implement. So states with a PDMP, and they're, all 50 states do have a, this program, uh, implement with a central database that contains all controlled medications that are dispensed to a patient or information on all of these medications. So out of the 50 states which have a PDMP program, 49 of them have this database. So why do they do this? Because healthcare providers need to or want to query the database to determine if patients are potentially abusing op opioids or other medications. So if a a uh, doctor wants to prescribe a prescription to a patient, they might check this database first to make sure that uh, they're not abusing medication or getting it from another doctor. And uh, uh, doctor shopping is um, one of the main things that this also helps with, uh, where patients go to multiple doctors <clears throat> for the same medication. So what are the shortcomings with this approach? So currently, access to this database is given to pharmacists, physicians, insurance companies, law enforcement, and more. Uh, each of these users can actually uh, add other users to their account that aren't in these categories. So there is a lot of access. And these users can query against only a few characters of a patient's name and view all of the matching results. So in some cases, you can view records from 20 plus states, uh, particularly in Florida. <clears throat> you, get, you have access to about 20 state records. And of course, with this many records for so many patients, millions of patients, uh, there has, of course, been breaches. So one breach is uh, in 2013. Uh, there was a breach in Florida that exposed about 3,000 patient records, and that was due to a law enforcement uh, agency accessing the records for a criminal investigation. So we're going to talk about the uh, model that we devised to try and improve the situation here and keep the pros but eliminate these cons. So, so for our model, uh, we have uh, three parties. For example, the, the patient, doctor, and the ser Microsoft server. And the input to the our model is uh, the patient. The patient have the ID, and the server have encrypted the ID, and the outputs give the serv the the doctor the label for for the patient ID. And we want to make sure that no one can learn the actual ID of the patients. And how we can do it? Uh, the first thing is the patients generate the public key and secret key and share the public keys to other parties. And now the patient also uh, compute the hash ID of the, uh, the hash ID and then send it to the doctor. So what can the doctor do with the hash ID? Uh, the doctor say hello to the server, and the doctor want to query the records, the encrypted records corresponding to the hash ID that uh, the doctor have. So what can they do? Uh, we use the private information retrieval to protect the input and the output of the private information retrieval to give the doctors the corresponding records for the uh, the ID, the, the hash values. Uh, that the, the doctor query on. And the next step, the doctor want to, uh, want to know the ML label for the, the record. And it means that they want to run the PPML model. And now important thing is the output of the label, the output of label is uh, encrypted. So that, that therefore the, the encrypted, the output is give to the patient who have the key and the patient can decrypt uh, the cybertech and give back to the, the doctor the label. And now with the label, the doctor can still get uh, the best drugs uh, for the patients. 
Uh, so there is two main issues with the model presented as above. So the first one is a dictionary attack. The patient can try different ID and to get different entries uh, from the database. And the second uh, problem, which is uh, even m more like major, is that patient decrypt the result and present it uh, to the uh, to the doctor. So how can we uh, ensure that the patient uh, presents the correct computation from the server to the doctor? So we uh, for this. Uh, from these two main issues, we, uh, we identify the second one as a more important case, and we focus on that one. Uh, so uh, what, what will happen is after we run the privacy-preserving machine learning model, we get the ciphertext, which is the encrypted version of the label, and we can also add an, uh, another extra layer uh, to ensure that uh, the, the computation is come from the server. And then the patient can decrypt it and present it to the uh, doctor, and doctor can check uh, if, if this computation is uh, done correct or uh, wrong. So we're going to give more details about this uh, later. Uh, so for the privacy preserving uh, machine learning model, the model takes as input the history of the patient, it takes the current prescription, and it wants to uh, output whether this prescription is uh, going to be the abuse of a drug or not. Uh, so this is basically a classification um, classification problem with uh, just two uh, two classes. So we propose using a logistic regression uh, to classify because it's easy to work, it, uh, and also there is prior work showing the feasibility of uh, this model. Uh, so what will happen is uh, the machine learning model takes uh, sensitive information about the patient's uh, history of the prescription, uh, for example, dates, uh, drug code, dosage, and uh, whether the patient paid with the cash or card. And based on uh, this uh, information, it will return the encrypted version of the uh, classif classification result. And, uh, as was mentioned before, that the key is, the secret key is only owned by the pa patient. So basically, after uh, the patient decrypts the label, he can send anything to the pharmacy, and uh, may maybe even a fake label. So we would like the pharmacy to verify the whole computation to ensure that uh, this label is come from the server. And uh, our idea is to uh, construct uh, an authentication within the FHE. Like, uh, in FHE, we can use some algorithm like the random permutation or other signature algorithm to construct an authenticated message which uh, uh, consists of the label and something like the timestamp. And uh, the pharmacy can use uh, these elements to uh, verify uh, the authenticity of the message. And uh, in this case, the pharmacy and uh, uh, the server will share a secret key. Uh, so a few notes about the performance of this protocol. Um, <clears throat> there's not much to say because we don't have an implementation, <clears throat> and you would expect the, the model to be the most uh, computationally difficult uh, and biggest performance hit. And we don't really have any data that, that uh, gives us an idea, but um, I don't think logistic regression <clears throat> on uh, this encrypted data uh, will be that much of a, of a difficulty. I think it's it's been done like we've talked about in, uh, a couple of days ago. Um, and the the last part then would be the private information retrieval step. And so we pulled some data on uh, seal PIR uh, from the first reference there that uh, kind of that backs up the claim that even if the database has a large size, um, the the time involved and the uh, communication size um, is Maybe not negligible, but feasible. Uh, so it's it should we should be able to work with that. And I think that's everything. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my first question is, uh, where is the source of your data? You assume there's a database, but I didn't see who's the party who actually collect and encrypt and upload the data. So the, the data, you could uh, imagine that the database is initially uh, empty, 
And as prescriptions are uh, written and dispensed, the database is filled up. And you usually keep track of maybe the first uh, or the latest, most recent three months worth of records uh, for a patient's controlled medication history. Okay. Uh, a second question is that uh, the first step you have PIR, then you have a machine learning model, and then you have the authentication, that three mm -hmm. layers. What schemes are used in those three layers? Or according to the papers, which uh, HE schemes are used? Right, are so that. Compatible? So the particular uh, HE scheme uh, is still, I guess, an open question. We're uh, not really sure about uh, what kind of uh, technique we would use for the authentication step and what we would need out of the HE scheme. Uh, whether BFE or TKKS would be a good fit or something else entirely, <clears throat> as well as for the model. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we have anything really to lean in one direction over another. Okay. Yeah. I guess, uh, so for these things like PIR, BSI, you, you need an exact matches, so probably it would have to be BFE or BGV or something? Uh, yeah, so that is the reason I have a star for the peer, you see? Mm -hmm. PIR, is the, it means that's peer extension. So basically, this is the keyword peer. So it includes PSI and peer. Mm -hmm. So that they can, in peer functionality, it just gives you, the input is just the index and give you the record. But here, the input is not the index, but more about the keyword. Yeah. So it means it's a combination between PSI and peer. Yeah, it's so for the symbolicity, uh, we, I, just, uh, I just put, uh, uh, the PR yeah. with star. So it's some variant of the sealed PIR. Yeah, so basically first you do the PSI with the hash, just the hash ID index to get the index ID, mm -hmm. right? And then you do the PR to get the, the value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so what is the re relevance of the hashing exactly? Oh, here you just use the dead need. So we have another protocol. The first one is we, for this one it's the, the simple protocol. We just assume that uh, the hash is determined this. So that is, that, that is the reason why we have the dictionary attack on the next slide. Yeah, I think, yeah, you see that one? Mm -hmm. So, but for the like a full secure protocol, we can have the encryption of the ID. So both the encryptions, and then you can use your, uh, your PSI, uh, like unbalanced PSI paper to compute to, yeah. Right, but the, but the hash has to be quite, uh, long for it to be not, yeah. to, for the dictionary uh -huh, yeah, yeah. to work. And so then my, that means that maybe it's not necessarily feasible to have it be exactly the index. Like you would really need a PIR by keywords, which no, is possible, right? No, but, uh, but if on the server side, the server side, they can try all possible the hash to see the dictionary attack, to see who, who, who do the query. For example, the server now my birthday and my data, my name, the server can compute the hash of the, my, my information and then see the record corresponding to my value. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I have one more question. Uh, so do you claim that you protect the scenario when a doctor sub subscribe for him or herself? You, uh, in the inter uh, at the beginning, you claim that there's that scenario actually happens. Doctors over subscribe uh, uh, things, issue subscription to himself or herself. And do you provide protection for that? So we provide. So we assume that the doctor performs a correct computation, but he cannot seize the data. So we are protecting the data, but not computation. So the. I think you all you always trust the doctor before you come to visit the doctor, right? <laughs> so yeah. So in, in in our scenario, we only only protect that the doctor doesn't see the data that uh, Aria mentioned. Okay, yeah. it might be a misunderstanding because at the beginning you said that the doctors might issue some uh, uh, a lot of uh, prescriptions just for personal use. For example, but like oh, that? that no, no, not for personal use. Okay. No. Just what we're protecting against is um, uh, it, it basically what, what's already in place is that uh, we, uh, when a patient has a new prescription for controlled medication, they check their history and make sure uh, that, that they're okay with that medication, that they're not abusing it, going to a lot of different locations. 
<clears throat> and so this gives a way to get that kind of result without having to query all of this patient data. Yeah, okay, yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. um, so I have one question. Uh, can you update this database after giving? Yes, yeah, you can. Uh, so I, I, I didn't think we needed to go into too many details. So here, how you to update? So inside the peer, you can, uh, you can get the index, right? I mean, inside the peer, you can get the index of the records. Yeah, and then the, you do a previous update. But the data is not just data, but includes some signature and. Uh, yeah, so that one, that part we didn't uh, focus on. This one, the signature is just include inside for the second, second machine learning stuff. Yeah, if the, um, uh, there's, a, I guess you could say a last uh, step after this, this final phase here, after the patient receives the medication, uh, the record would then have to be updated, but we use then the same patient's private, uh, public key, uh, which is what it, the records are already encrypted under, and try to combine them. I just wanted to make a comment is that, um, in fact, it's not really PIR, like private information retrieval that you need here because like the privacy of which records are being returned from the database to the pharmacy is not that important. And so I like your design where you have the hash ID where you can basically filter the database using the hash ID. And then what you have is a collection of records. So it's not, it's not really PIR, but now you've identified which records you want to input into the ML step. And the ML can operate directly on those encrypted records, let's say if you've done it in BFE or something like that. So I think the use of the term PIR is a little bit of a red herring here, and it might be confusing to, like, the developer or the designer. Oh, yeah, thank you for your suggestions. But uh, my, our, our model, we want to protect the server to see the exact patterns. So basically, so for, for example, I'm a patient, and I visit the doctor just today, I, I, if the server can see the which record to return to the doctors, and tomorrow I also visit the doctor, and the server can see that which records uh, I return again to the doctor. So it means that the, the server can see I have some triples. So that's why we want to protect, uh, we want to hide all the information. Yeah. I, I'm not convinced on the importance of that part of the protection, but. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>